Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at exact differential equations, uh, where they come from. So first of all, uh, let's have a look at, if you see this, it's a simple equation, consider the solution to some differential equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a reverse engineering bit here and try to see if we um, find the differential of this uh, or try to differentiate this equation and consider it as a two variable problem with y being dependent on x. So you've got that internal relationship that y depends on x. So if I do that, then basically what will happen is I'll end up with uh, partial f by partial x when I differentiate the left side plus um, then I'll have partial f by partial y okay and chain rule says because y is dependent on x okay so we'll have that and that's going to be equal to the derivative of c which is equal to zero so when we differentiate this equation with respect to x and y basically fully differentiate this equation so what we're really looking for and what we're trying to do is this essentially df okay we're trying to find df and of course df dx so we end up with uh, basically this because this is the complete differential so now what happens is we can rearrange this equation but instead of doing that we're gonna clean it up a little bit so as you can see let fx equal m and fy equal n then we have this so m dx uh, plus n dy equals zero now the question becomes um, uh, if we have this differential equation how can we know if it's an exact differential equation, okay? So, um, or any equation, how is it exact? So what we want to do is develop a criteria for exactness. And that is, uh, we use a, a rule which we know quite well, which is the fact that this f, this f we started with here, f of x here, this one, f of x, y equals c, we are assuming everything is continuous. So this is a continuous function over whatever domain of interest that we have, or the interval of interest this is a continuous function if it's continuous we know that the partial derivatives the mixed partial derivatives and so what do I mean by that so I mean that of course that if we go to the second derivative of f uh, with respect to y x and the second derivative of f with respect to x y okay these are equal uh, and they have to be for a continuous function and we are assuming our function is continuous so therefore, this means basically, if m is x, so this means that basically we have a criteria that my should be equal to nx. Okay, so if our equation is exact, then this condition should hold. So what we've done is, instead of just having any equation and just seeing is it, uh, we cannot assume it's exact. Okay, so we'll have to do some testing. Uh, so the best test for that is this one. Okay, it will guarantee us that it's a necessary sufficient condition, okay, for exactness. Partial m by y is equal to partial n by x. So here's an example of a differential equation, and we can check it for exactness. So clearly we see m here, m is equal to y cubed okay and n is 3xy squared so obviously m y is 3y squared and that is equal to n x we can see that because the derivative of this with respect to x is also 3y squared so this is an exact differential equation as it stands and we can continue to try to find this uh, function f because that's the next thing. So the first thing we've done here is we've got a criteria for exactness. This shows that this equation is exact. Okay, so now that we know that an equation is exact, the next steps are to find this magic f, this, uh, which is a solution to the differential equation. In order to do that, we know that m itself is, uh, by definition, partial f by partial x. So we say we take the the value or the expression for uh, m from the um, differential equation and equate these together. Now what we do is basically we want to find 
basically f here so this means we are going to integrate y cube with respect to x which gives us xy cubed plus um, now since this is f of xy remember this is going to be f of xy okay just for so this uh, the constant in this case would be a function of y so we'll call it g but it's only a function of y now okay so it's g of y because remember if you differentiate this with respect to x you get zero okay so we don't use a constant here we use this function which behaves as a constant as far as uh, integration with respect to x is concerned or differentiation with respect to x now this is basically uh, f so what we can do is we can now differentiate f with respect to y this f of course this f so if i do that then the derivative of this with respect to y is going to be 3 x y squared plus uh, g prime okay because dg dy so it's a full der complete derivative and that uh, f of y of course here is n as you can see and our n is 3 x y squared so that's equal to 3 x y squared this then of course means uh, we'll have some simplification these two sides will cancel and usually you will find that there is cancellation like this every time. This is going to be equal to zero, which means that g is basically equal to a constant c. We get a constant c here. And uh, once we have the constant, okay, uh, then we can go back and we complete what f is actually. So our solution to the differential equation is uh, xy cubed plus um, the constant, we'll call this c1 rather than c. So what will happen is we've got xy cubed plus c1, and that's supposed to be equal to c. Remember from here, the original, what we started with, some constant c. So which essentially means that our solution is just xy cubed equals uh, some constant, um, let's say for instance, c2, okay? So we've got uh, our solution to the differential equation. And that is how we solve exact differential equations. So let's consider this second example. Uh, so here, your m, we have this is our m. Okay, this is our m. And this is n, as you can see from the differential equation. Please remember, it's m dx and n dy. Sometimes they may be in opposite order. Sometimes they may be written as a differential equation with the dx over here. Uh, either way, make sure that it's the m part is dx, uh, the multiplier of dx, and the n part function is the multiplier of dy. Okay, so a check for exactness. So they are exact, of course. So now we proceed to find the function f. So partial f by x, which is m actually here, as you can see, 6xy minus y cubed is actually partial fx. We integrate with respect to x. So we end up with this very simple integration. Remember, it's with respect to x. So again, g of y, uh, a function of y, a full function of y becomes uh, our basic constant of integration. So now we're going to differentiate this with respect to y uh, so that uh, we can get basically f y, which is going to be our n. So you see, if I differentiate this with respect to y, I get 3x squared over here, 3x squared minus 3xy squared plus the derivative of g. And that's going to be equal to, of course, n, which is here, so it's this. Now you will notice that, of course, as I said, things cancel out, this cancels out, this cancels out, and this cancels out. So we're just left with g dash equals 4y, and we can now uh, easily solve this differential equation. It's just, uh, for so there it is, g dash y is equal to 4y. We integrate that, that gives us this, very easy, simple, g y is 2y squared plus c1. Now we put together the function f of x y remember over here you see this is now we found this so we're going to put that in here so we end up with this f and of course this means our solution is is this and we've just absorbed c1 and the other constant f x y equals c together so we just end up with this so that's the solution to this differential equation as you will notice it is implicit in y of course um, uh, but that's not a problem 
uh, we have the solution to the differential equation using this method of exact differential. Identifying an equation as exact and then following the procedure gives us the solution. We'll stop here. Thank you so much.